going on you guys welcome back to my channel today we are doing a life update i am going to be getting ready i'm going to go ahead and tell you right now this is going to be very chatty i'm going to give a life update and just my feelings on everything that is going on just simply because there's a lot going on and i'm just basically in a place where i am not going to water myself down i'm going to say how i feel in the words of my mom you can get mad or you can get glad i'm going to keep it one double o i'm not going to be mentioning about the products that i'm using just simply because the products that i'm using right now are not the focus i just wanted to talk to you guys and i have to get ready for work so let's go um okay back to work went back to work on the 23rd yes so first official week back to work crazy busy happy to be back because listen it was time your girl we, I, I need to you need to make some money so back to work in the salon i think now because i've got past the first week so now everything is kind of settling out i had that first initial rush which i knew was going to happen and then by the time i got through that first week i knew things would start to settle out um t-shirt launch went really well i still have the beauty brains and muscle gains and makeup and muscles those are still available those are limited edition so whatever is currently left on my website houseofamberp.com that is what i have those will not be restocked i do have something else coming my um original thought process I was planning on doing a summer launch so I was going to do another launch at the end of June however I see that there is a need for something else so be on the lookout I will probably be launching that on Friday but t-shirt business all as well again thank you to everyone who has supported me I appreciate you and you know I'm just trying to figure out this thing as I go you know so the launch of my t-shirts back in the salon I started prepping yesterday so yeah things are slowly getting back to normal and I put quotes around normal because I know things will never be as they were um fast forward to let's see where are we today is june 2nd that i'm filming it so what i really want to talk about my thoughts with the george floyd matter because i have just gotten to a place where i gotta start saying things yesterday on my facebook i will put the post up here so you guys can read it um this is not the first black person who has been killed by the cops. We all know that. This is just basically the icing on the cake. I work in a place where it's a white woman's world, okay? I'm just, I'm just gonna be straight with it. And I've been there for eight years. Obviously, I like it, <laughs> you know? Um, out of the 12 stylists, there are only two black women, myself and Amelia, who I love with all my heart and soul. She's amazing. She is in her 60s and she looks like she's 40. Don't know what she's doing, but I've been trying to tell her to give me the secrets. But um, <clears throat> on my Facebook, I always try to keep it professional, you know, because I have clients that follow me. And basically in my post yesterday, I was just kind of like, you know what? I got to say something because this is tearing up my soul. And so I said what I said, you know, basically, I'll paraphrase it. Um, if you don't like what I'm saying, don't sit in my chair, period. You know, my clientele is very diverse. But like I said, the salon that I work at, it's, a, you know, it's heavily populated by white women. No big deal, but that's just what it is. That's the area, you know. And in doing so, well, okay, first of all, my girl, Lady T, if you guys don't follow her, what are you doing? You need to be following her. Um, Instagram, YouTube, she made a really great YouTube video. and She said a lot of things that I agreed with and that I was also guilty with. She said that she used to not like Facebook because she was just kind of in the mindset that Facebook was negative. And I wouldn't say that I would say that I thought Facebook was negative, but it was definitely my least favorite platform. Like my favorite YouTube. I love YouTube. YouTube, Instagram, I'm on there because I have to be. Instagram is not my favorite place to be just simply because I don't know. I just prefer more, more videos, but that's me. And she was saying that she didn't, she told herself that Facebook was negative because you don't want to see things that make you uncomfortable. Basically, I have always realized that Facebook, you can learn a lot about people through Facebook. 
if you just sit back and pay attention to the things that they post, it is real easy to figure out who they are and where they stand. And for me, I've already clocked everyone. I already know who is who. But what I've done wrong is, you know, you hear something in the break room, break room talk, and you just kind of ignore it. Have to stop ignoring it. I pride myself on being able to tactfully verbally assassinate people when I have to. Yeah. I can do so. I'm a firm believer that you can say whatever you want to say just as long as you say it with tact. So that's been my motto, my mantra, and I just had to kind of really take a look at myself and it's just kind of like you hear stuff quite frequently. You don't say anything. The main reason why I don't say anything is because I have to keep in mind, first of all, I'm the minority, you know, got to keep it, got to keep it quiet. Don't want to be the angry black woman. Secondly, I have to remain professional, you know, so it, it's definitely a rock in a hard place. But I am just now to the point where if someone says something sideways, I'm going to speak on how I feel. Everybody can participate in taking a stand. You have to do what you feel is right for you. Like I had a conversation with my best friend because she was here visiting over the weekend and she wanted to go protest. Me personally, I'm fine with a peaceful protest. I'm not bothered by protesters. I'm bothered by the cops or anybody that's gonna antagonize or start rioting and looting. Like I'm not here for that. I'm not here for violence. I think it's awful. I think it's wrong. I'm not here for rioting. I think it's awful. I'm not here for looting. I don't want to do those things, but guess what? I don't agree with those things, but I understand it, okay? Because I know a lot of people are so worried about, oh, well, you know, the people that are rioting and the looting and blah, 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 the looting and the businesses. Yeah, it sucks. It's terrible. But stop and ask yourself, why do you think people are doing this? This didn't just come out of nowhere. Black folks have been protesting racism for decades now decades we tried to peacefully protest colin kaepernick he took a kneel y'all lo people lost their minds over that that was a peaceful way of protesting and even that wasn't good enough so guess what when people feel like they aren't heard they are going to do whatever it is that they need to do by any means necessary for their voices to be heard and that's unfortunately that's where black people are right now you know I feel like for the majority of you guys that watch me, you are black women, but I know we have quite a few of non-black women, non-women of color, and that's no problem because me, I have been raised to love and treat everybody with respect. I see color. I can see very vividly that someone is a different color than me. Like I said, my clientele, very, very versatile, and I love that, you know? And for any of my non-black or non women of color that are watching this first of all thank you i have had quite a few of white friends even white clients she messaged me shout out to her i love you and she was just basically said i'm ignorant and the fact that she could reach out to me and said hey i'm ignorant I am concerned. I consider you my friend. Can you please explain this to me? Because my husband thinks that, you know, racism and all these things don't exist and that this stuff doesn't happen anymore. And I gave her quite a few examples. Just last month, Lo and I, we were in Harris Teeter, crazy busy, you know, hello, we're in a pandemic still. And we went into self-checkout. There was about five people ahead of us. Okay. So we're in self-checkout. And there's a guy at the beginning of the self-checkout line. He's just standing there. As soon as it's Lo and I's turn, because we we went to the first one that was available, it was on the opposite end. For some reason, when it was our turn, he decided to kind of just kind of stand behind us and monitor us. Let me tell you something about my husband. Excuse my language. He ain't with that shit. He is not. Um... I know some black people, you know, they they have some weird feelings about interracial relationships. And if you're a black woman not dating a black man, and that, that's a whole nother video within itself. But my husband is not a black man. OK, 
Just because my husband is not a black man does not mean that I don't have love and appreciate black men. I come from one. I have plenty of black men in my family. Although my husband's not a black man, he's a person of color. He's a Latino man. He's South American. So therefore, we vibe. He understands racism based at a very, very extreme level. He has experienced it. He understands the black struggle because he has been indulged in the black culture for so long. He understands it and he gets it. So this guy is just kind of monitoring us, monitoring us. And he's looking at me. And at this point, I could tell he's getting mad and he's speaking to me in Portuguese. I'm just like, low, it's okay. Calm down, calm down because I ain't trying to have nothing happen in here's tear, okay? And so as soon as we check out, the guy goes right back to the front. I told my client that. She was like, wow. I was like, yeah, Marillo's had another instance. He installs appliances. He, you know, people are calling where he works, ordering appliances. He always gives a courtesy call. He arrives to the house. Lady opens the door. She looks at him. Marillo's partner, Nick, who is also Marillo's best friend. He's South American as well. The lady looks at him and says, do you have any white men working with you? Now this isn't the first, second, or third time Marillo has been on a job and a customer has said some racist ass stuff to him. This ain't the first time. And when he called me after and he told me what happened, and I was just like, sweet baby Jesus, did you tear that house up? Because my man can turn into the Hulk, you know? And he's like, no, he said, I told her, you know what? Don't worry about it. Her husband came flying around the corner apologizing sir I'm so sorry for my wife I'm so sorry I, I, I hate that she disrespected you and Lowe was like no nah, I'm good don't worry about it we're gonna get you a white man on the job and him and Nick left because he was just like I now I don't feel comfortable coming into your home you can go ahead and call the warehouse file a complaint I ain't coming in you know so that was the situation with Lowe something that I unfortunately have to deal with at the salon I've had some stupid comments said to me but the one thing that really really gets me the most and it hurts my feelings it the last time it happened to me it put me in tears i had to remove myself as as i was oh let me go mix your color now i went to the bathroom to cry occasionally you know when i get new clients and i walk up to them and i say hey you know i'm amber i'll be your stylist for today and they're looking at me like i have five heads do you know why they're looking at me like I have five heads? Because in their mind, their Amber had blonde hair, blue eyes, and fair skin. So when they see me and they realize they are looking at a very, very black Amber, the face, and this isn't all, this, has, this doesn't happen with all clients, but this happens to me at least three times a year with a new client. And they are just looking at me and I can tell they are immediately uncomfortable. And it sucks because everybody knows when you're a black woman, especially when you're working in a facility where it's predominantly white women, you got to work double time. You have to work harder. You have to prove yourself. And so now I have to spend the first 10 to 15 minutes of the consultation proving to you that I can do your hair, proving to you that I can make you feel comfortable. I have to basically make you feel comfortable with me. And this isn't a flex. This isn't me being arrogant. I'm one of the most talented stylists in that freaking salon. But the fact that I have to spend these 15 minutes oohing and on you making you feel comfortable with me because of this color of my skin y'all that is exhausting and it is draining I hate it when that happens to me because it makes me feel like crap it makes me once again feel like oh okay you're still not good enough no matter I'm always on time I'm punctual I have all my tools I educate myself I go over and beyond but yet that still happens to me and it breaks my heart. Like I tell people, I'm tough, but I'm human. I bleed too, I have feelings. So those are a couple of instances that I have. And I have, I've shared that with my client. She was just like, oh my goodness. She's like, this, this is just horrible. And I said, yeah, you know, she was very apologetic. And she's like, I feel bad because I've been ignorant for so long. And I said, well, the thing is now, 
I'm glad that you came and had the conversation with me. So now you're aware. So now there is no excuse. Like black folks ain't making this stuff up. I can't tell you how many times I've had a client say something to me that was just completely rude and racist. And it just shook me to my core and I go in the break room and someone says, what's wrong? And I tell them what was said and they say, oh no, no one said that to you. Why the hell would I lie about that? Like why, why would I lie about that? I remember I was doing one girl's client because she was on maternity leave. And so she literally sat down in my chair and she was shocked that I was a black woman, okay? And she literally looked at me and she said, oh, okay, well, I was, I, I just pictured you to look different. And I said, excuse me? And she's like, oh, no, well, and I'm looking at her because I'm waiting for a response at this point. And she's like, oh, no, that's not what I meant. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I said, well, what exactly were you expecting me to look like? Because I knew at this point what she meant. And the fact that she said it, she basically said what she was thinking, which was fine. But the thing was, I wasn't there to be combative or debater. I was there to listen to her. And I think that she could see that I wasn't saying anything. I was just gonna listen to her. And she, of course she got, I am so sorry. That's not how I meant it. And I just kind of looked at her and I said, well, this is the way that I look what are we going to do with your hair today? Would you still like me to service you today? Oh my goodness, yes, absolutely. My, my stylist recommended you. She said that you were the best. And in the back of my mind, if your stylist recommended me to you, to you, why are you tripping? So those are just a couple of situations that I've had to deal with. Um, basically where I am at in this point, I have said what I needed to say and I'm also, you know, going to say something. If I see something that's not right, I'm going to speak on it. I'm going to say it's not right, you know? I'm I can't keep consuming and going over and over with this stuff because y'all it's wearing heavy on me. It is wearing heavy on my emotions. It's not healthy. And that's the other thing too, you guys. You can know what's going on, okay? But you don't have to constantly consume it. I can't consume anymore. And that's not me being ignorant. That's me looking out for my spirit because I know how I am. I know how I operate. I know how I function. And me constantly seeing it over and over, it's not helping my spirit. It's not helping me emotionally. It's not helping me mentally. So if you are someone who is just taking this content in over and over and it's starting to mess with you, sis, log off. You don't have to consume it, okay? Something else that I want to say to my white allies out there that are using their voice to stand up and say something, baby, I love you so much. I love you. I've said this for so long now. Black folks have been trying to stop racism for decades. We have been saying this stuff forever. In my mind, I feel like to truly, really get rid of this virus that we've been living in for so many years, it is going to take our white women and men allies to start using their voices, standing up and saying that this is not right. That is what I truly believe it's going to take because the more of them that can acknowledge it and say it's not right, that's when we're going to see a change. We have to work together for this to change. Like I said, us black people, we've been doing this. We've been doing it. We all need to come together and get this right. So that's just where I'm at with it, you guys. That is a life update. That is how I'm feeling. I haven't had most, I haven't posted much content. I haven't posted any content because I just didn't feel like jumping up here, shoving makeup videos on YouTube without speaking out on it. So there we are. Those are my thoughts on it. And like I said, I, I'm not going to be, you know, carrying on and speaking any more about it up here unless I feel the need, the urge to. But my spirit is worn out. I am tired of reliving it. I'm tired. I just I, I can't take it in anymore. So that is where I'm at with it, you guys. Let me finish up the rest of my makeup and then we'll go ahead and close out because we are coming up on 20 minutes of me. Yep, yapping. <laughs> All right, you guys, so makeup is done. Just want to close out the video. Last statement, I'm assuming that since you are here watching me, that this is something that you also care about. 
and you want to end this you want to take a stand so it doesn't matter how you choose to stand up for it if you want to go protest peacefully all good if you want to post on your social media cool if you want to donate cool if you know you just want to stand there be an ally for the black community do so everybody is different do what feels right for you but please understand that being silence being complacent being neutral that's compliance not saying anything speaks louder okay so if you are someone that's out there and you're just trying to stay out of it Mm -mm. that's the problem people have been staying out of it for too long you need to use your voice this ain't about politics okay this has nothing to do with politics so if you think this is about politics my friend you have truly missed the mark if you think the statement black lives matter is saying that other lives don't matter you have truly missed the mark the reason why we're saying black lives matter and shouting it at the top of our lungs because incident over incident and time after time it has been proven that we don't straight up it has been proven that we don't so please understand that it is crucial i love you we're getting back to it after this video please again guard your heart guard your spirit guard your mind be blessed in the lord i love you guys so so much you know the deal keep it simple and i will see you in the next video peace